What's happening gamers? I'm K-Wing and welcome to Arkham Wednesdays. It's time to learn stuff while punching crime in the face, more or less. Now today's video is a little bit different. We're actually going back to Arkham City and playing some Nightwing challenges because of my most anticipated topic, which is DC's new Convergence. Which, I'll talk about that in just a sec, but before I get to that, just in time for the holidays, my t-shirts have been given the green light. Just hit up my store on my website, which is gamingreviews.com, and enjoy. More shirts are gonna be added, uh, after Thanksgiving, so there you go. I'm gonna have a more formal video after Thanksgiving, but now... On to DC's new nine-week miniseries, Convergence, which is coming in 2015. And I'm so excited for this multi-Earth thing. So just what is this? Well, it's basically another crisis where Earths collide, except this time it's timelines and many different decades of the DC universe meeting up and having tea or something. If you don't know what any of the crises are, uh, the best way I can explain it is Crisis on Infinite Earths, the storyline where Barry Allen died by running so fast and fusing all the different timelines into one, creating New Earth. Something like that was actually teased in the Flash's TV show on the CW with a newspaper that Dr. Wells had that said, Flash disappears in Crisis 2025. Anyway, Dan Dido and Jim Lee are hoping to bring back many former DC Comics readers like myself and in the new 52 fold with the resurrection of many past DC heroes and villains from pre-Flashpoint. Everybody paying attention? This will be on the quiz. Now I don't need to go into my dislike with the new 52. You all know about that, which butchered Nightwing killed Connor, Tim Drake was never Robin, Oracle gets healed and becomes Batgirl, Titans are a joke, and all the rich history gone. Blah, 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 blah. We, we know all that about me, right? So DC had this brilliant notion. What if the previous universe survived Flashpoint and didn't merge into the new 52 or disappear? What if everything that happened before that event still continued to this very day? What would that be like? Think of it like one year later time skip from DC, except much, much longer. So what's been going on with our past heroes? Well, Dick Grayson and Babs are about to settle down and get married, finally! Stephanie Brown is working with Red Robin and Black Bat, though she still has her doubts about being Batgirl again. Wally West and his kids notice a disturbance in the Speed Force, so we get to see more of Wally and his children, which is awesome. Starfire, Donna Troy try to help Roy cope with the death of his daughter, and Lois Lane is about to give birth to Superman's baby. But that's only to name a few of the great storylines that we're going to see with Convergence. Pretty much the entire past heroes and villains are still around and out and about doing heroic or villain-like things. So just how did the pre-52 universe survive all this, though? To put it in simple terms, Brainiac, who pretty much captured various timelines and planets or cities that have ended and placed them inside a dome, which is outside of time and space. For the most part, normal people really don't know what's going on, but the heroes and some of the bad guys are kind of like, huh, what's with this weird dome thing? And that's all I really know about that. Now, in terms of fan service, Crisis on Infinite Earths is small in comparison to what Convergence is going to really be about. Recently, DC revealed another huge splash today, so the pre-Crisis world would also be placed in this dome thing. So now the Bronze Age DC time period is going to be in this dome thing. Think Batman's Outsiders, New Teen Titans, the greatest titans ever. Though Dick Grayson wore that funky disco Nightwing costume, but we'll forgive him. Supergirl, Barry Allen, the Justice Society, and many, many more. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, because this is going to cover heroes and villains from decades of DC's past rich history. So many heroes are going to be in this that it's just going to blow your mind. Also, there's going to be some interesting uh, consequences for this. Supergirl and Barry Allen, for instance, are being warned that their actions will lead to their deaths. But that's not all. Flashpoint, which was supposedly erased after the whole thing with uh, creating the New 52, and the Justice Lords will also exist in this dome-like thing and interact with both pre-crisis and pre-52 universes and characters. So that's just gonna be... Wow, that's, that's pretty insane, isn't it? 
Honestly, all of this stuff is enough to get me to resubscribe to DC just for this mini series so I can get everything yeah, about what's artist. happening because these stories me. have me so excited. Only Jim Lee really knows what worlds Brainiac saved and is experimenting with, but I really want to see the Young Justice Earth. I want to see Batman the Animated Series, Justice League, Brave and the Bold. Uh, it'd be interesting to see the Beware the Batman universe, the Nolan films, Man of Steel, you know, all these different things in the dome. Make it happen, DC. That would be really interesting. Now, this crossover event can lead to many possibilities for DC fans and the DC Universe in general, like multiple Earths or just rebooting everything entirely like what Marvel's doing. Now, I've not really read the Earth 2 End or New 52's Future End stuff because it just looks really stupid. I'm sorry, it does. But these stories are going to be connected with Convergence, so they're going to kind of like lead into this thing that's going on with that. Also, the new 52 is said to be changing after two month break during this miniseries as well. So this could mean a couple of things and I have some theories. Number one, 352 is gonna become part of the new 52, similar to what they did with the Earth 2 storyline and characters. Namely, Helena Wayne and Supergirl becoming Earth's Huntress and Power Girl. So some elements of the 52 and new Earth would mix, which I might be okay with or they'll just replace dead characters during this event with other characters from different universes. It's what happened before and it could totally happen again. This would also explain why DC has been slow to reintroduce characters like Wally West, Blue Beetle, Donna Troy, etc, etc. Number two, full reboot at the expense of the pre-52 universe. Personally, I hate this idea. It would be like uh, the former people in the Bronze and Silver Age had to deal with in Crisis on Infinite Earths, where the heroes they grew up with giving up their lives so that the other Earth could live. So now the heroes that I grew up with would be the sacrificial lambs, and I don't like that. Though the characters may actually get a proper send-off since most of the original writing staff that made Nightwing, the Titans, Superman, Green Arrow, Green Lantern, Flash, etc. are all returning to pick up their pre-52 books during this miniseries. So that is pretty awesome. Unlike where the pre-crisis world was handled by people really not familiar with the way those characters were written, like Helena Wayne and Senator Robin and oh, it's just, it was weird. It was really, really weird. But again, I don't like the idea of uh, my heroes that I grew up with dying in action so that we can try to make the new 52 limp on. I'm really not a fan of this idea. And if that's the direction DC's going, probably done. There's no real reason for me to stick around because there's no more hope, only bad new 52 storytelling. I'll just stick with a lot of the past comics that I've been using for my Batman lore, watching like Young Justice and whatever new cartoons uh, DC pops out and movies and things like that. I guess I would be strictly a DC cinematic and animated universe type person. Oh, and watching The Flash on the CW and Riero and the new Titan show and things like that. Yeah, so that that's what would happen with that. Anyway, number three, 352 replaces the new 52. Now. There is a lot of evidence to suggest that this is very possible. It's no shocker that many fans are annoyed with how the many characters have been handled. Remember, after Hush, DC did some pretty bold storytelling and introduced different characters taking on iconic roles like Blue Beetle, The Question, Batgirl, Batman, Dr. Fate, etc, etc. The list went on. It was so interesting to read I have to say that when Spoiler became Batgirl, it was some of the best storytelling that I had enjoyed in comics. It was just fantastic seeing the adventures of Stephanie Brown, her interaction with Dick Grayson as Batman, Damien as Robin. It was hilarious. Also, the kind of like tension, romantic wise, between Red Robin and Batgirl. Similar to, you know, the teasing period that Dick Grayson and uh, Babs went through during their tenure as Robin and Batgirl. So it was really, really well done. The question, Renee Montoya was an excellent um, character to become an iconic, you know, superhero. The question. And that all got kind of lost in translation in the new 52, you know? So, there. also, we can't forget about The Flash. The Flash went through so many amazing things, you know? Wally West, his kids, Barry Allen coming back. The new 52 Flash isn't even as powerful 
as the old Flash. So, yeah, the idea of the pre-52 coming back and getting rid of the new 52, I really hope that happens. I want to see that wiped from existence, personally. Because, I mean, the outrage involved with not just removing iconic characters and moments from their lives, but also de-aging a lot of characters and depowering many more of them. Look what happened to Hal Jordan for a long stint in the new 52. He wasn't even Green Lantern, you know? Donna Troy never showed up. Wally West is kind of showing up, but he's a lot different than the original Wally West. So, I mean, they've made some interesting choices, but they haven't really been good ones. So I hope that this is a great opportunity of change for things to come in terms of the characters that most of us grew up with. Picking up right where we left off after Barry went to try to save his mom and set up Flashpoint. So it'd be interesting to see what happened uh, during that time where Barry Allen disappeared and this Earth was just, like, saved. So unlike many of the other timelines and universes being shown, DC has already said that pre-Flashpoint has still been active. It didn't stop. Things changed for the characters and some relationships, etc. Most importantly, time has been moving on and so has the continuity. So these characters are older, they're wiser, there's been interesting things that happened to them, and we're gonna get to see some of that in April. Now the rest of the universe is trapped inside of this time dome thing. They were picked up at certain events during their timeline, like pre-crisis, post-crisis, after-crisis, all this stuff. You know, that that's where their stuff happens. Pre-Crisis Supergirl is a great example of this, because she didn't fight in the Crisis storyline and was plucked into the dome. She's alive when she isn't supposed to be, yet other characters that she's interacting with in this dome know she died, just like the new Teen Titans know stuff like that. Uh, I just want to take this time to mention that I love the new Teen Titans because of all the stuff that happened to them and the growth of the characters. Dick Grayson becoming Nightwing, Wally West becoming The Flash from Kid Flash, Donna Troy getting all these amazing powers, Starfire having to deal with her people, you know, the relationship between Beast Boy and Raven, all this stuff is because of the new Teen Titans, and that continued into the many different, uh, I guess you would say soft reboots of the DC Universe. One of the things that I think would be really, really cool is seeing two Nightwings from the same timeline, you know, younger and older, interacting with one another. I think that'd be amazing. The leader of the new Teen Titans, Disco Suit Aside, and the former Batman of Gotham marrying Oracle. In case you hadn't guessed, I'm totally pining for the possibility that New 52 after Future's End becomes pre-52 and just gets erased in favor of the pre-Flashpoint being brought to center stage. Seriously, how long do you think a universe titled New 52 can be called new after three years? It just doesn't make any sense. Pre-52 had a rich history and most importantly, character development, which is something we have not seen at all in the nightmare that is the New 52. Giving Damien superpowers and... Ugh. Number four. Full-blown reboot of the New 52 universe. The final thing that could happen is Convergence, Ties into the dark side upcoming war storyline, which is going to happen at the end of 2015, according to a DC source. The new 52 are much weaker heroes, and they get their butts kicked by dark side every other Sunday. And many other characters over the years just totally beat on uh, all these characters that are supposed to be much stronger. I'm not suggesting they be super OP, but the fact that Flash can't really get out of ice and you know, run as fast as he used to, and Superman is, you know, uh, it just really bothers me. So yeah, uh, it's not that I want an OP Superman, by the way, but I would love to see pre-52 Barry Allen and Hal Jordan face new 52 Darkseid. I, I want to see who's stronger in that bout. Still, we can speculate until the bats come home, folks. The series kicks off April 2015 and will be going through the summer of 2015 and probably tie into that whole Dark Side War where Dark Side is coming back angry and whatever, you know? So it's sure to be a fun read. If you don't really enjoy the new 52 and you've been waiting for a chance to read DC Comics again, then Convergence is going to be your vehicle into hopefully something awesome. Now, in the comments section below, what do you think will happen in this massive event spanning DC's entire 70 plus years? Share your thoughts below, feel free to discuss, just keep it civil folks.
I mean, even I'm gonna try, okay? Let, let's put our differences aside and just chat about DC. Now, I wish all of you a great Thanksgiving, and thanks for being patient with the lack of lore stuff. It has been a crazy fall for me, and I am just totally unorganized at the moment. But I have a lot of fun lore stuff coming for Batman. We're gonna be looking at a lot more Bronze Age stories since they are amazing. And uh, maybe we'll even get into some uh, movie stuff. You never know. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch. So God bless and happy gaming. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, different type of Arkham Wednesday video. And hopefully it won't get up too late. I'm looking at you, YouTube. Have a good one, guys. I'm out.